you start by mixing up some thin set. Add the thin set to the water and then stir it using a drill on the lowest speed possible. Gradually add more thin set until you get a consistency like thick toothpaste. Now we'll go ahead and apply our thin set over the seams and we'll have enough left over to hit all the screw heads with some thin set as well. What we want to do next is set a ledger board that's at the bottom of the second row. So to determine the height of the ledger board, you'd hold your first tile. So it's just a little bit above the top of your tub. Okay, so right about there. We don't want to be sitting on the tub. We're going to fill that with caulk when we're all done. So I'm going to determine the height right there. 
And then I'm going to add a quarter inch for the grout between the first and second row of tile. Then get your level and draw the line. You may need to check this to see that you have the correct space all the way across to, depending on how level the surface is that you're working on. Scribe that line all the way around and then you'll set your ledger boards. On the edges, I'll have this tile, so that's where the, the edge will be, plus a quarter inch for the grout. One more piece I want to plan ahead for is this accent strip. So uh, I know for measuring my tiles before about 35 and a half is where the accent strip will, will lie. So, so that I don't forget it, I'm going to write on the wall that I put this accent strip all the way around. That's just for me. So I don't lay tiles all the way up to the top and then remember, oh yeah, I was supposed to put the accent strip right about there. Doing careful layout and planning will give you a real nice tile job. Now I measured ahead to know how wide the tub is, which is five feet. And I know that if I start on the right side with a full width tile, the left side will work out just fine. If you're working with different measurements than this, measure it out, plan ahead, so you see how your tiles will fall from one corner to the other. Take the flat edge of your trowel and apply some thin set onto the cement board. After you've applied it over a surface, flip your trowel over and use the notch side to create even, consistent notches that look like this. We'll start by only setting full size tiles. So I've set the first tile on top of the ledger board and worked my way up and to the left using spacers as I go. I've set a quarter inch space in between each tile. Once I reach the stopping point right below that accent strip, I needed to add another ledger board above the nook. So doing some careful measuring, and getting my level out, I set that extra ledger board so that I could continue tiling 
across to the left. This is how far I got on the first day. You can see all the full tiles are set all the way up to the accent strip and then I applied the accent strip up on top. I had to do a little cutting around the valve assembly and I used a wet saw for that. You can also see that I used the accent tiles on the back of the nook. You'll notice the spacers to keep that correct uh, gap for the grout. And you also notice some cardboard shims that I used. Uh, these are just cardboard from the boxes that the tile came in. And they work really nicely for just small increments that you need to raise up the tile to get them perfectly level. So that's why layout is so very important when we're working on our tile project. When the main tiles were all set, then I cut tile to fit in the spaces where I had openings. So I did that on the edges, in the corners here, the corners over here, as well as the accent strip. I cut some of those tiles to fill out the rest of the portion. So I cut the corners to the correct size and I cut the corners for the accent strip as well to get as much tile on as I could so it could all set up overnight. Go ahead and remove the ledger boards and take out all the spacers. Now we'll fill in all the spaces above the accent strip, on the top of the tub, and around the nook.
Some places you'll need to apply tile to are quite small and you won't be able to get your notch trowel in the opening. In those cases, apply thin set to the back of the tile, make a notch, and then press the tile in place. This is called back buttering. If you need to cut a hole in a piece of tile, like I did around the pipe for the shower head, you can use either your Dremel with a diamond cutting wheel in it, and then you'd work from both sides, work from the front, work from the back until you pierce through the tile. Or you can get some tile bits, put it in your drill press, drill a hole, and then use some nippers to enlarge the hole until it's the right size. To set the tiles above the tub, I found that using a couple pieces of painter's tape is a nice way to hang the tile because it's really hanging because it's not supported on the top of the tub. You want to have a little gap there so that the water will run off and hit the caulking and run into the tub. So use a couple pieces of painter's tape to support each tile as you work your way around the top of that tub. Use a tile saw to cut 45 degree angles for the pieces around the nook. This gives a nice mitered corner. 
Remember to leave about a quarter inch gap between those miters for grout. Finish up all the edges, let it set overnight, and then tomorrow we'll grout.